people who are going to college were better qualified for particular jobs because on average, not all the time, but on average, a lot of those people were smarter and making more money because of that. And so all you've done is you've now created these additional layers of stratification. So a person who used to be able to get a job with a college degree now has to have a postdoc degree in order to go get that degree. A person who used to be able to just graduate high school now it's de facto, you got to go to JUCO and then you got to go to college or nobody's even going to look at your resume. It's really, really terrible for people who can't afford all of that. It's led to this massive increase in educational cost that is inexplicable other than this particular sort of bleed up. And by the way, federal subsidies for higher education. Again, one of my problems with federal subsidies for higher education, I'd love for everyone to be able to go to college if qualified to do so and if it is productive. But one of the things I did when I went to law school is I took loans because a bank said I was going to get my money back if I got a law degree from Harvard. But you know when you're not going to get your money back? If you're a bank, you're not going to lend to some dude who wants to major in you know, art theory because is that a good bet? There's no collateral, right? If, if I give a loan for a house, I can go repossess the house. How do I repossess your garbage college degree from UCLA? There's no way to do that. So you know, one, one of my, so you know, this is a broader conversation about education in general. I think the educational system is cruising for a bruising. And I think all that's necessary for it to completely collapse on the non-STEM side where you actually learn things is for people who employ to simply say, give me your SAT score and I will hire you for an apprenticeship directly out of high school. That it would cut out so much of the middleman. But as far as the general point that you're making about institutions, mm -hmm. I, I may disagree on the education and how far it's gone. In general, I agree with you. So it's in, in general, I agree. And I get to use my, my favorite longest word in the English language here. I, I would consider myself in many cases an anti-disestablishmentarianist. Nice. Right? You see, I, I like to drop that. That's it, because it, if you're an establishmentarian, that means you like an the establishment to the disestablishmentarian. Right, right. So I'm an anti- so. Can you say that word, Dustin? That's, That's right. the one we all learned growing up, anti-disestablishmentarian. is there the longest go. word so, in the dictionary. And, and so he is also. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh. they, but- I and then some kid in your group would say, what about supercalifragilistic? And then you're yeah, what about pneumo ultra microscopic yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the science terms. Yeah, exactly. Or what so. about the 7,000 letter thing that's from part of a uh, biochemistry? <laughs> I got my education in the Soviet Union, so we just did math. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, yeah. why you're a useful person. Soviet but, Union math was that one plus one, how to make that equal three? We, we know long I've words, and he streams on the internet. <laughs> and, and, and I talk for um, a living. So anyway, yeah. the, but the, the point is that I don't disagree that there is a general populist tendency on all sides of the aisle to look at the institutions and then throw them overboard. I think that some of that is earned by people who are in positions of power at institutions who have completely undermined the faith and credibility of those institutions. I think that you have to examine institution by institutions, which ones are salvageable and which ones are not. So I'm not a, a full anti-disestablishmentarianism. I'd be partially sure. in that camp. There are certain institutions like higher education in the liberal arts that I think we may be better off without. And then there are certain institutions, like say, participation in American government, where when people talk about, we need a revolution, like, no, we don't. That's not a thing. We need an evolution. We need change. We, need, we can use the system. And, and you know, But I think you have to establish, you have to look at it industry by industry, you know, just curious. institution by institution. On that position on institutions, sure. do you think Biden or Trump would side with you more? Uh, as far as the institutions, yeah, I think the institutions in the United States at the governmental level are robust. I think the social institutions are fair. Yeah, but I'm just curious on your general view of institutions. Do you think Biden or Trump would side with you more on how you view them? Um, I mean, I think that in rhetoric, Biden would. And then I think that he would tear out the face of the institution and wear it around like a mask like Hannibal Lecter. I mean, that's, that's my actual... he resisted some people's calls to like pack the court and... Uh, yes, because I think that his use of executive power was greater than that of Donald Trump. The power that he had, he used to greater effect than Donald Trump. Donald Trump, again, thrashed up against the sides of the box, but could not get out of it. Okay. Um, for just on a real quick, because on the that that answer went a lot farther than the initial question. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, just on the real quick thing, the reason why I, again, my main problem that I feel like we have today in society is people are getting into their own bubbles. The idea of having like conservative schools and liberal schools seems like the saddest thing in the world to me. Like I would want conservatives and liberals going to school together because I think these people need to interact with each other more if for no other reason than to see that the other person is not like an actual monstrous, so, horrible entity that I wants to that, destroy the country. So I, I, listen, yeah. I think a classically liberal mm -hmm. idea for many schools would not be a bad thing. I think it would be a good thing. Yeah. Just wonder if that's salvageable. And if it's not salvageable, then the answer to that is to I actually like create it, alternative it, institutions. I feel like I feel like the biggest issue that we have is people are they sort into these different like phantom worlds to where even if you live in the same city, there are totally different worlds that exist between liberals and conservatives. And I feel like one of the big barriers to people understanding the other side sometimes is just a little bit of information or a little bit of like firsthand experience. Um, when I so in terms of information, I'm sure you saw. Um, I don't I don't know if this is a full on study, but they were talking about how. 
some huge percentage of students would change their mind on from the river to the sea when you told them what from the river what, to the sea what the river was and what the right? sea was yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or when you said like yeah what does a one state solution mean a lot of them like such that the numbers went from like 70 percent to like 30 percent in terms of like support um would, would fall and it wasn't because you were doing a radical redefining of their whole ideology you were just giving them a little bit more information um and then something that i've seen on a first-hand level is when i go and speak or do debates at universities sometimes i'm in very 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 conservative areas some of my fans are, are trans having like a trans person show up and talk to conservatives for a little bit uh not like in a speech but just like in a in like a bar or a setting, like a lot of them walk away thinking like, oh, not every trans person is like this insane lunatic from Twitter that is an actual crazy person. And then for some of my fans, when they hang out with conservatives, like, oh, these guys are actually pretty friendly. I thought they would have all been homophobic, racist, transphobic, and evil, but they're not. They're just like normal people. I feel like we need more of that. Mixing. I totally agree with that, certainly. Yeah, and I feel like on our social media platforms, on our algorithms, in our schools, I feel like we're sorting harder and harder and harder. And any type of rhetoric that encourages the sorting is really bad and damaging. We need to like continue to mix up. And there's uh, other things I want to talk about, but Lex is opening his mouth. Destiny the, the uniter. 